In this video, I want to talk about casting. It's an important topic in programming, and it's important to know what it means in Unreal Engine. I'm going to start by looking at some examples in languages that might be familiar to people who've done some programming before, specifically Python and Java, and then we'll see how those ideas translate over into blueprints in Unreal Engine. Let's start with Python. Here I have two classes, Item and Health Potion. Notice that Health Potion is a subclass of Item, and so I should be able to make an item like this, and then I can pick up that item by calling its pickup method. Uh, let's go ahead and run that script. And it should be what we expect. It prints out the message, you got thing. All right, well, I can also make a health potion. And I can pick that up too. Again, let's check to make sure that works. Good, we get the thing, we get the health potion. Now, health potion, of course, has the extra method, which is quaff. So I can say potion.quaff. Let's make sure that works. That looks good. But what if I say i.quaff? Well, we get an error at runtime. This is because Python is dynamically typed. At the time that we define this variable i, it can point to any object at all. And when we say pick up, then at runtime, the Python interpreter looks for a definition of the method pickup. Potion here is a subclass. And when we say pickup, it doesn't find it in health potion, but it can look at the superclass and find that definition. However, if I try to call this quaff method on i, that fails because there's no such thing. So we get this error, item object has no attribute quaff. So dynamically typed languages have this property that you can write the script however you want, and it will go at runtime to find that method. Uh, that means it incurs a little bit of a cost at runtime. Um, it can be pretty quick to write code like this, but it's a little bit unreliable. I definitely fall into the camp that says, if I'm writing a large software system, if I'm architecting a system or dealing with something complex like a game, I'd rather use a statically typed language. Now let's switch over to Java and see what that looks like. In this Java example, I once again have a class called item that has a name and a pickup method. And I have a subclass called health potion, which has a quaff method. Now in main, if I want to create a general item, I can do something like this. And of course, I can call the pickup method on that item. Notice that I have to declare the type of item to be item. Let's go ahead and run that and make sure it works as we expect. No surprises there. It printed out the implementation from the pickup method. Now, if I have a health potion, of course, I can pick it up, but I can also quaff it. This is legal because the pickup method is inherited from the supertype, and the quaff method is defined on health potion. Now, on item, there is no way for me to call quaff on it. That method doesn't exist. Now we get into the properties of statically typed languages. We know the type of item to be item, and this quaff method does not exist on it, so it is illegal to even try to call it. The compiler won't let us get away with that. And contrast that with the Python approach, where because it was dynamically typed, we could try calling anything, and at runtime it goes and looks up and see if it's there. In a statically typed language like this, we can't call that method. Now let's look at where casting comes up. We can define an item which is a health potion. That's legal because of subtype polymorphism. That is to say, when we're given an object of a type, we can reference it by one of its supertypes. And of course, we can still call pickup as expected. However, we cannot call quaff because the item class does not define that method. So even though the object it's pointing to is a health potion, which has the implementation of quaff, we can't access it through this type. Here's why we need casting. What we could do if we needed to call that method is cast i2 to a health potion, like this. Now we're saying to the compiler, we, the programmers, know that i2 really is a health potion, and so cast it into that type and use this implementation of quaff. And we see that this works as expected. Now, let's switch over to Blueprint and see where this idea shows up. Here we are in Unreal Engine. 
which as you probably know is implemented in C++, which is a statically typed language. Uh, Blueprint provides a nice wrapper around some C++ functionality, and Blueprint is also a statically typed programming language. So we're going to see some behavior here that's more like the Java example than like the Python example. In my example here that I've created, uh, I have a character, which is based on the third-person template, and I've added a health variable and a couple of utility functions for dealing with the health. Uh, the important ones for our purposes are add health and reduce health. And what I'd like to do is, when I run into one of these green poison orbs, I lose health, and when I run into one of these red healing orbs, I gain health. Let's look at the poison orb first. Okay, so imagine my character runs into that orb, and so the other actor here is my BP character, so I want to call reduce health. But I can't do that because the type here is actor, even though I know the thing that ran into it is in fact a subclass of actor, BP character. And so, just like in the Java example, this is where I need to do casting. Casting will make this actor into the runtime type BP character. And, and again, notice it's not actually changing the object at all, it's just changing the type through which we can access methods. So now we can say reduce health. And let's just go down by 25. When this is done, also, I'll go ahead and destroy the orb. Now notice the uh, visual scripting language here gives us a slightly different behavior than our Java example. Here, if the cast is successful, we do the first execution pin. But if it was a different kind of actor that ran into this orb, uh, if I, perhaps I add some NPCs or AIs or something, uh, then this cast would fail, and in that case we run out the other execution pin. So that's a nice feature of visual scripting that is a little bit more awkward to do in text-based programming. Uh, but let's go ahead and run this and make sure it's working as expected. That looks good. Let's go ahead and do the analogous case for the healing orbs. Once again, we have the actor, and we know that the runtime type should be BP character, so we attempt the cast. When that's successful, we add health. And once again, I'll make that 25. And when I'm done, destroy this actor. Here we go. Poison orb, poison orb, healing orb, healing orb. So using that approach and having some understanding of the type system, we can handle any kind of these overlap functions, and this shows up in a lot of different ways when you're programming a game. Uh, but I hope that makes some sense to you and you understand better what casting is doing. Now, if you really want to level up your knowledge, let me show you a slightly different approach. So in this case, I have a Blueprint interface called Pickup, and it has a single method in it called Pickup, which takes as an argument a BP character. My idea here is that any time my character runs into a thing that can be picked up, we'll call this Pickup method on it. Let's take a look at this alternate character, which is a subclass of BP character. Any time it overlaps something, it will try to pick it up. That is to say, it will try calling the pickup method through the BPI pickup interface. Now a curious thing about Blueprint interfaces is that if this other actor implements that interface, then this method gets called. And if that actor doesn't implement that interface, then this does nothing at all. It gives us a behavior that's a bit closer to the Python example than the Java example. Notice also that we're sending self along as an argument. So now, let's take a look at our alternate poison orb. Over in the class settings, I've already said this implements BPI pickup, so that means we can provide an implementation for that event. Here, we can immediately say reduce health, and then, as before, destroy the orb. Now wait a minute, you're saying, why don't I have to cast that? Well, because the parameter here that is being sent is already of type BP character which, of course, is the type that has the reduce health function on it. In fact, the actual runtime type of this object that's being passed in is going to be alt character, which is my subclass, but because it's BP character that has the method, I can call it. Let's set up the similar case for the health orb. There 
we go. Let's see this in action. Here's my character. Run into a poison orb, lose health, lose health, gain health, gain health. But what's that spinning cube doing here? Let's take a look. Non-pickup cube does not implement that interface. It's just a regular spinning cube. So if I run into it, it does generate an overlap event, which means this gets activated, and we try to call the pickup method if that class has the BPI pickup interface, but since it doesn't implement that interface, nothing happens at all. Well, I hope that's helpful to you to understand how casting works, why it has to be part of the ecosystem, uh, but also why you might want some other tools on your tool belt to get a more robust and well-designed architecture. Happy programming.